I'm here at Wabatomica. That's a, essentially the pronunciation. Wapatomika in Algonquin. And Black Hoof became Principal Treef after 1780 in the Kispokata and Chalagata. Uh, those are bands. For those of you that don't know, the Shawnees had five different bands in their tribe at that point. And two had already gone out west around 1776. Deliwa and Deliwa. They had already gone out with Peter Loramie to Missouri to get away from the British. And so the British came here through General Logan and uh, Simon Kenton had to help guide them here. And so they destroyed the village. And you can see now it's a corn field and bean field, soybeans and uh, corn. They alternate the crops here in this very fertile land, and it's very fertile. And here's a little creek. So just a tiny little rivulet now compared to what it was in the old days because there were timber around here, not just meadow. And this slough is between the fields. And up there on that escarpment that looks like a stage would have been the council house. Because the Shawnees usually built council houses up on a little bit of a promontory. And they always built their villages near a spring or a creek. And you can see over here, Makachik Creek flowing on that, that line there. So they would have had a council house up there where Simon Kenton was uh, ransomed by Simon Gurdy so that he could go to Detroit and escape the burning of the stake because Simon Kenton was caught when he was 23 years old down in the south on the Ohio River at Eagle Creek, which is present-day Ripley, and brought up here for trial. And this was the last sight that he saw at that point in his life because he was taken to Detroit and he was treated by the British officers at Detroit under Lieutenant Colonel Hamilton, Henry Hamilton. And then he escaped from Detroit and went to St. Louis. Now you can read all that that you would in Edna Kenton's book and also Alan Eckert's book, The Frontiersman. Mrs. Edna Kenton was Simon Kenton's relative. Two generations later, after Simon Kenton, she wrote the fascinating book, The Life of Simon Kenton. I think it was published 1936. See, there's a beautiful valley here, everybody. A beautiful valley. Iowa's got some beautiful valleys. And today it's very nice weather. It's very cool. It was 110 the other day in the street. Actually, it's even higher than that when the sun was out. Got to be careful here because the humidity is so high. You can't even hardly breathe when it gets to be that hot. But today it's very nice. Even though it's low ceiling and light rain, it's very nice. And you can see how the end ends would have led in wigwams and other types of structures made out of wood that were similar to cabins. And they have actually adopted the log cabin after a while because they were weather tight and very secure. And I'll get out of the line of fire here because we got quite a bit of traffic today on this particular road. So this will tell you a little bit about the central part of Logan County. 
Uh, this is uh, where the tallest hill in Ohio is, Campbell Hill, 1,506 feet. And the ski resort, Valley High, has been there for nearly 75 years. You see this bottom land is very fertile. It was glaciated and uh, it's very fertile. There's some moraine here where these hills are, but it's very flat in this valley. So Dwight Dowson signing off once again. Hope you all read a little more and look at the map so you can get your bearings. There's a lot to learn here. I've been sent it 54 years and I still don't know a whole lot. So I'll see you all later.